This is the updated version of the Durston XMID Pro Tent. This is not the original version that we just had a video on a few months ago. And there are some changes between the two, some pretty substantial changes, except there's at least one change that I was hoping that we'd get that we didn't get in this tent. So let's just set it up and uh, see what's changed. So this tent is an obvious update from previous versions of the tent, not only because of the material of the tent, the old tent was polyester, the new tent is made out of Dyneema. We've done a video on the two-person version, but there are some beefs that I have with this tent. Honestly, even though everybody loves this tent, there's two things that drive me nuts about this tent. Um, I've actually heard that Dan's customer service is like next level though, like every time anybody ever has an issue, he is always just like right on top of, oh my gosh, I'm getting a phone call. Hang on. It's Dan. Dan. Hey, Dan, what's up? I just got a crazy vibe. One of my customers might have a few questions. Wow. Yeah, I, I do have a few questions, actually. I've got some some beef with your new tent, uh, some things that kind of kind of drive me nuts, actually. Uh, I was hoping maybe you can help me with some of that. Yeah, man, let's, let's chat through it. All right, let's do it. All right, Dan, I got, I guess, since I own a uh, two other versions of this tent, right? I've got the one person version, which is the polyester version. And when I actually made that video, I said that it was nylon. Yeah. <laughs> the people that follow you, it's like the church of Dan Durston, I feel like. They are so devoted to you. They came to your defense in a huge way. And I never heard so much in the comments that it was actually made out of polyester. So. <laughs> yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> they, they are legit. Uh, this tent though, this, uh, new version here, this is not, uh, polyester. What is this? Yeah. So this is some crazy, crazy material. It's called DCF Dyema. It's the, the best thing about it is that it weighs less than half. So all your, like, if you want a seriously light tent, this is the stuff. It's crazy light and it has a bunch of other cool attributes too. It's incredibly strong. It's almost two or three times the strength of a regular woven fabric and it doesn't absorb any water. It's, it's basically like a, a reinforced plastic that's just like space agey and techy. What, uh, what weighted Dyneema is this? Is this 5.1, 0.51? Yeah, this is the 0.5 stuff, yeah. Okay, 0.51. But then, uh, so the interior of the tent though, that's totally different. That is not uh, Dyneema, that is made out of uh, nylon, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. and that is uh, 15 denier nylon, right? Yes. Okay, what did you, why did you go with 15? Yeah, it's nylon because like DCF, it's awesome for strength. The fibers are on the inside of the material, which make it crazy strong, but they're on the inside of the sandwich. So it's not as good for abrasion and punctures. It works as a floor, but it doesn't really stand out as a floor. Okay. Whereas we went with nylon for the floor because it is, it actually packs quite a bit smaller than the thicker versions you'd have to use for a Dyneema floor. And it also, it's just as light while giving better abrasion and puncture performance. Okay. All right, and then this is the one-person version. So why didn't you come out with a one-person version to start? Was it was there like a launch reason, like, hey, I'm gonna do a two-person, and then I'm gonna build more with a, a one-person, and we're just gonna, or was it like the crowd was like, give us the one-person tent? Like, how did that work out? Yeah, so I, I put way too much time into my tents, so like <laughs> other companies... I, I would argue that's totally not true. I think you put just the right amount of time into your tents because people love them, but go ahead. Yeah, so the um, when I see another company come out with tents and there's like the one person and the two person that come out at the same time, I'm like, I, how do they do that? Oh, really? Okay. It just like, it takes so much time, even if on a one person and a two person, if they're like identical, they're still like fine-tuning the pitch and all these little details, trying to get all that right. So I kind of always just work on one version at a time. And for the two, for the DCF tents, they're crazy expensive to build. Like this material, it's awesome, but it's pricey. And I was basically like pouring my life savings into launching this thing. So I basically can't afford to launch two at the same time, even if, even if I have the bandwidth. So I was just pick one and the 2B market's a little bigger. So I was like, well, if I have any chance at not blowing my life savings, I should 
start with the, the bigger market and hopefully be able to sell these things. So are you like the designer on this tent or have you had help? Are there other people to help you with this? Or do you have like, or, or is it like, you know, you're reading the comments and people's, uh, you know, um, I don't know, input is super helpful. I mean, what, what does that, how does that work? Yeah. So like Durst and Gear is a pretty small, like family business. Everyone thinks we're kind of big. Like, like somebody returned a tent the other day and it was like, attention, the returns department. And I'm like, really? <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, it came to my kitchen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so Durston Gear basically is me. So I like do all the design on these things, but we do have like our fans are amazing. And we have a lot of people that give us feedback all the time. And so we're always informed by the users of our tents, which is like the best, the best thing. People that are like, oh, I want a little bigger or like I want the pockets over here. And so we do involve the community in some of this design stuff and chat some of these things through. We post sometimes we post questions on Instagram, like, where do you guys want the pockets? Things like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So but it's you. I mean, you're sitting behind the computer doing this or Yeah, yeah. It's it's me. I'm just kind of a just a guy that uh, you know, it's a big nerd and loves tents. Absolutely obsessed with tents. And and, and I noticed there's a that sweet backpack back there. Maybe we can Yeah. Maybe we maybe you maybe you'll call me about that one day too. That's uh that's yours too, right? Yeah, yeah, we do some backpack. Okay, all right. Um, okay, so uh, the inside of this tent, tell me the dimensions on this tent. This one's obviously smaller. The floor, that, no, I've, I have I did appreciate. I, I Okay, if I, if I had my choice between the one person and the two person, I think I'm taking the one person because I find that it's plenty of room for me in the inside. And I personally love the footprint size of this versus the two person, just because it's a little bit easier in some of the places here in the Midwest to pitch a tent because you're dealing with <laughs> woods like this all over the place. So what's the dimension differences between the two tents? Yeah, so that's something that pe people ask us about. And with this one, I tried to get it as small as we could. So it is, this is 98 inches long. It's only two inches shorter than the two person. Um, 98 inches versus 100 long. The big difference is in the width. That's gone down from 80 to 63. So it's 17 inches um, narrower on the fly, which drops the footprint quite a bit, makes it fit into a lot of sites. And this one is still like um, like uh, reversible, I guess, right? Like your head, there's no head end and there's no foot end, right? So yeah, it, it's radially symmetrical, which means you could rotate it and it would still be the same. That's a pretty big word, Dan. Ra ra radially ra ra yeah or rotation you're you're, you're past you're past my knowledge on uh geometry there but uh okay I, I get what you're saying so um and then these uh vents these ventilations i noticed that they were awesome that i i we we slept in what was the temperature i mean it was it was like low 20s the first night oh the first night was like yeah it was like low 20 anyway we were we got down into the teens and we had no, I had no condensation problems at all. Um, and then yeah. we, we were pitched on, first night was ground like this. The second night was <clears throat> nine feet of snow. <laughs> so, and I didn't set it up that night because I was, uh, if, if, you're, if you're watching this video, I'll put a link to my rescue in the description below and you can go check out that video. Um, but yeah. uh, as far as um, the, the vents, have you, how, what was the thought process on these? Was it like people were real concerned about having uh, ventilation that was just like, I mean, what, what was your idea behind these? Yeah, like a big focus on my tents is that they are just like, we're not just like, let's just make the lightest tent, period. We're like, let's try to make the lightest good tent. And that means that it actually kind of works. So we're not like gonna make it crazy small or like get rid of useful things. Some companies like cut away the bottom foot of the fly to save weight, but then it's all drafty. So with this tent, like we can add so much, like there's a ton of space in it. We can add vents to reduce condensation, um, proper zippers on the fly, all those things. We can have all those things and it's still like right there on being super light. So, so yeah, okay, proper zipper. Talk, talk to me about this zipper here. So why, why, why is this a proper zipper being a waterproof zipper? What's your thought process on that? Yeah, like I like zippers on tents. Like zippers are awesome because they're, like they work so well. They're like one handed, they just work. Here, it's an easy reach when you're inside the tent, you can just like close it up so easy. There's other ways you can do it with like clips and things like that, but they're always gonna be a two handed job. And you lose rigidity on your tent when you're, when you start, like if you put a slit into any kind of shape, 
then there can be movement there. So having a zipper makes it more rigid and robust. It's funny, it's funny you say you weren't trying to create the lightest tent, but this tent, what is it, like a pound? Oh yeah, it's crazy light. Like, right, it's so, so, light. So, so did you, was it like, did you accidentally create one of the lightest tents? I mean, cause it, I know of lighter tents, right? But they're, but they're one person tents. Um, but I mean, from a feature perspective, you're talking maybe two ounces, three ounces, possibly in, in a lighter weight tent, but you're losing things like what you're talking about, which is a zipper. You're probably losing some ventilation stuff. You're definitely losing the ease of setup. You're definitely losing, um, you know, some of the headroom and other things in other tents. So am I right? Yeah. Yeah. The light, like the lightest tent is two and a half ounces lighter, but it needs like six more stakes. So when you factor that in, it's, it's maybe one ounce lighter. And then you, it's like way tiny, no vents, no zippers, like, like you can just get so much tent for like incredibly light. Okay, um, well, I'm glad you're talking about tent stakes. So we should get into the beefs that I have uh, with your tent, if that's okay. Um, there's, there's, uh, so um, I, I, I am, first of all, I'm, I'm excited and glad that you give out tent stakes because a lot of manufacturers will sell a tent and not give out tent stakes. I'm not excited about the tent stakes that are with the tent. And so um, I think they're just, they, I think they could be better. I just do. I think they could be a little bit better. Are you, is, is it in your plans to uh, maybe come out with some better tent stakes in the future? Or what is your thought process on that? What was your whole design thought on that? Yeah, tent stakes, that's actually kind of crazy. Tent stakes are one of those like weird objects like that are super hard to get in COVID. It's like toilet paper, tent stakes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, the, that's the order I usually go. <laughs> like everybody, once they're done, done grabbing the toilet paper, they're like, and the tent hey, where's the tent stakes? Yeah. <laughs> then you know you have some problems in the bathroom. <laughs> so like literally for the last like three years, basically, all the tent state companies aren't taking new customers. So we've had really limited options and we've we've had a few different ones. And yeah, they're all like kind of mediocre. And that's why we made them optional on the tents. Like they work, but they're not my favorite either. And I'm still working on that in the next like year. In the next year, I think I can start getting some really awesome stakes. Okay. With everything kind of slowing down now, the companies are like, instead of like, no, go away, they're like, oh yeah. Forget. Yeah, if you could submit, yeah, just submit some of my requests to your research department, that would be great, okay? If you could do that, yeah, that'd be super good. Okay, so um, I noticed on the magnet here, this is actually a better magnet uh, than the last one, right? Like, did you, in, did you update these? Um, it's the same magnet, but we put less material on top of it. Oh, okay. Cause I, th the magnets are closer together. Okay. I felt like it was stronger. Maybe that's just uh, my head. Okay. But here's my beef. Like it is stronger for that reason. It is. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, here's my, here's my beef. Um, right down here. I, 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 maybe I'm doing, maybe it's just me. I'm probably just doing this wrong, but these, uh, shock, the shock cord here. How come you don't do like the traditional, um, you know, the little uh, clasp that goes on the end that you kind of loop around and do that? I find that this for me comes loose unless I actually tie it. And I don't want to spend an extra two seconds tying something, Dan. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. We're uh, that's a tricky one. Like door door toggles are one of those things on tents that like sound like oh it's basic, and then it it gets messy and complicated. I did the these ones because without the cord locks, you save a few grams and we're trying to be super light. But then also you can kind of stick a finger in there. If you don't pull it too tight, you could stick a finger. So at least undoing it would be one handed. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. I got you. But so he's so what he's what he's really saying right now, guys, is that he cares more about the ultralight people than Dan Becker. That's what he's really saying. That's right. That's right. <laughs> No, okay, that, that makes sense. That does make sense, actually. If you scooch that pole, like the pole is pulling out a little bit, you can see the wrinkles on the floor. Okay. If you scooch it inwards by like an inch, the floor will look better. Yeah, like that. That does look better, actually. It, 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 it's nice to have Dan Durson in your pocket. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I think I think he I think he's just nervous about the next beef I have with the tent. He's just he's just trying to he's trying to butter me up here. Okay. That's right. Okay, so the next beef that I have with the tent is when I am in my tent, okay, and it's nighttime, and I take off my headlamp, I really want a place to hang my headlamp. Why aren't there any loops in the ceiling of this tent, in the roof of this tent to hang my awesome headlamp to light up my tent? 
Yeah, uh, it's because people want a lot of different things, and if I give everyone what they want, it gets too heavy. <laughs> We're talking like a piece of Dyneema that could be glued to the top. Is that is that too much to ask? I mean, you you raise a good point. It's, it's super <laughs> light. We originally didn't even have pockets in these. Everybody wanted the pockets. Okay, all right. All my tents, you'll notice this trend where they start off with this very pure ideology of like, Dan has this purest minimalist thing and then, okay, everybody wants pockets. All right. You give them the pockets and then they want loops and, and then we do it. So we have added those on the regular models. So the, so the, so if we, so if we whine and cry enough, <clears throat> guys like me, there's a possibility we may get the, the Dyneema loop in the ceiling of the tent. Is that what you're telling me? It could happen. Yeah, there are stick-on ones. <laughs> I right almost now. got you him could... to say it. I almost got him to say it. It was so close. He was going to do it. Okay, so I do appreciate these pockets, though. That was a huge upgrade. I think you probably got a lot of backlash, am I right, not having these pockets there? Like, people were, like, it, it was like taking away candy from a baby, am I right? People love them, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, well, that's good. Okay, so what's the what's the length of the bathtub floor on the inside? The floor is 90 inches. 90 inches. Okay, so... Was this designed, because I'm six feet two, sometimes I have problems with uh, being taller in a tent. Was this built with uh, tall people in mind? I noticed that the ends here are pivoting up, so I feel like I have better headroom. Like when I sit up, like what was the thought process on that? Yeah, the, one of the really cool things with the x geometry is how you take two poles and you kind of offset them, and that makes the two end walls steeper. So most of these tents, they have like a pole in the center and then you're getting a lot more inward slope. So what, it doesn't really show up on the spec sheets because some other tents have a 90 inch long floor too. But with the steeper end walls, the floor is still 90 inches at like a foot and a half off the ground. So it's like a usable 90 inches instead of kind of a misleading 90 inches. So like this is, I think, I think it's the, the longest in terms of usable length for like like trekking pole, one person tents, like right up there anyways. I will say that when I was setting this tent up, Emmett commented to me and he said, Dan, I cannot believe how easy that tent was to set up. Um, when you designed this tent, were you thinking to yourself, how can I make a tent easier to set up? Or was it just like, holy cow, that was easy. It's like, I always want a tent to be easy, not because it's like, oh, I don't want to learn something hard, but because like I want this to be a legit tent that when you're out there, the weather sucks. Maybe you're, maybe you're I don't know, dying on the rim of the Grand Canyon or something. <laughs> what? No. Only, only people that don't know what they're doing almost die in the rim of a Grand Canyon. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> you don't want to be goofing around with like 37 stakes and 13 guy lines and all this kind of stuff. You want something that just works. And so the basic shape is a rectangle because it just goes up so easy. And then you can add more stakes, you can beef it up, all those things. Like, you're going to use more than four stakes, probably. But, like, the core shape is based on a rectangle, so it's just going to be, like, friendly to use. And just when the weather sucks, you just get right inside. Um, one other question I have for you about this tent, though, is are there other differences? Like, what are the big differences? Is it just size between the one-person and the two-person tent? Or are there subtle differences between the two? Uh, well, one of the differences is in the spaciousness of the tent. With the with the two person, it's like trying to be super hardcore light. So it's a little smaller than a regular two person so generous and it's a little smaller. But with the one person tent, it's kind of the opposite. When you, we didn't make it smaller and then you get rid of those interior mesh walls and all of a sudden you have the space right out to the fly and it feels, it feels huge in there. In terms of volume, it's almost 50% bigger than kind of its main competitors. So, Okay, so then when Dan Durston goes on a backpacking trip, which tent are you taking? Like, what's your go-to? You're, you're like, you know what, this is the one I want to take. Yeah, like when I do like a serious hard trip, it's this one. Like we did a trip this summer, me and a buddy. It was 100 miles of bushwhack, like no trail for 100 miles with mountain path, like across the divide like 20 times. Uh, it's this one, like if it's a hardcore light trip, it's this one. If it's a little more of a chill trip, then the double wall tents are a little more cozy but this cuts the weight almost in half, which is awesome when you're pushing the big miles. All right, what's next for Dan Durston? Uh, what, what's the next tent that's coming out? Are you gonna spill the beans on it? Do you have any other plans? Are you, are you thinking of future tents? Is there a three person tent coming out? Like what's, what's next? Yeah, uh, people always want, uh, well that's hard, people want a lot of different stuff and you try to give it to them, but you can only do so much. People do want a, 
this kind of tent, but in the separate inner, like a double wall in Dyneema. We might do that, and we're still looking at it. And then I have a crazy idea for a new tent that I'm trying to decide if it's too crazy. Or, like, is it brilliant or is it crazy? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's both or neither. But that's something that I haven't even prototyped it yet. It would be like two years away, probably. But you'll see more. You'll see some crazy tents from us. Not not in 2023, maybe one in 2024. So, so we're, we're not getting a sneak peek into the crazy tent? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Not yet? Well, it only kind of exists in my mind, which is why I don't know if it's crazy. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Awesome. Okay, well, one final question. Um, the last video we did, uh, we gave away one of your tents. Uh, what do you think we did that again? I bet you there's people watching this that maybe want this tent really bad and would love to have one, would you be willing to give one away? Yeah, for sure. I, I, I think it's awesome, people that get involved in this kind of thing, and the, the comments, the feedback, the support from the community, I really appreciate that. So I'd love to uh, give a 10 away to, to somebody watching this video. Awesome. I think we should do the same thing. I think if you want to win this tent, uh, you got to comment below, I want that tent. You have to go follow me on Instagram, and you got to follow Durston Gear on Instagram. We will randomly pick a winner, and uh, we will send out a tent directly from Durston Gear to you. All right, Dan, thanks for jumping on like super fast like that. Customer service is obviously great over there. And I really appreciate that the next uh, tents are gonna have better stakes, a, you know, a better uh, uh, tie out for the inner and also a, uh, you know, a place to hang my headlamp. So really, really appreciate that. That's super nice of you. Uh, thanks, man. Thanks for the call. No, seriously though, I really appreciate you coming on again. And uh, uh, I'm excited to see what people are gonna be doing with this tent out in the backcountry. Yeah, thanks for checking it out. All right, so hopefully these tents are back in stock. I know they are hit and miss as far as people getting them online. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks again to Dan Durston for coming on and we will see you guys on the next one.